In the previous uh, part of the introduction to Crypto 1.6, we looked at the rendering of reflection maps and the generation of normals from a PAT volume, which happens automatically, as well as the visualization of uh, particle data in the viewport and using the particle data view. As mentioned, the particle data view shows the render time uh, channels. In this case, we can even see the channels that were generated on the modifier stack and that they wouldn't uh, affect the renderer, but they exist in the stream. Let's remove those two modifiers, which will also remove those channels from the stream. And uh, take a closer look at the way particle uh, colors are being set, depending on uh, the content of the modifier stack, the base object, the um, source mesh, uh, and uh, material settings, and so on. Currently, we are rendering the original orange color from the uh, PRT volume, which was acquired from the orange color of the uh, source mesh. And if we would uh, switch the overwrite to white, as it was uh, previously, the particles will render white, but looking at the uh, particle data viewer, the color channel will still contain the orange color from the source because this overwrite happens at render time and just replaces the color in the moment of drawing but doesn't really modify the data in memory. This means that we can uh, now apply a crypto channels modifier to the modifier stack, switch the input to a value of type vector and set the color to white and if we would take a look at the particle data viewer at this point it would contain the color white and the result from the rendering will be exactly the same as with the override but the data is actually stored in the particles and couldn't of course be uh, different per particle and not just white for each one for example, if we would open the crypto channels uh, modifier and switch uh, the value type to a texture map and pick, for example, a cellular map as the source for the color, rendering this will give us a cellular map distributed on the particles in object space, which is a quick uh, way of applying a texture to the particles. Of course, we could apply the texture directly through a standard material, which will be applied after the modifier that has been updated. But in some cases, uh, for example, uh, when we're using uh, particle data, like the normal channel, uh, and we want to mix it or add it uh, to the uh, content of the texture map, using the Magma Flow Editor might be more flexible. For example, let's uh, add the normal channel. We'll switch uh, our channel input to type normal. And uh, the result will be uh, the normals as we saw them in the uh, previous introduction, mixed with the cellular map that we applied to the KCM the crypto channels modifier. Let's disable this modifier and take a look what happens if we modify the vertex color of the uh, source mesh itself. The PRT volume object uh, uses the um, vertex uh, color channel and the UV channel uh, as well as the normals and so on in order to acquire data for the particles. If we switch to display from box back to mesh and move the stature to the site. The particles are acquiring the positions in object space so they don't really care about world space transformations of the uh, original object and can in turn be cloned and transformed and uh, scaled, rotated, uh, repositioned without uh, affecting the base object. On this mesh we're going to add a vertex paint modifier and immediately our particles turn white because the uh, vertex color now of uh, our mesh is set to white. We can display the vertex color on the source mesh and start painting using the brush a red color on the 
stature. If we would now um, update our PRT volume, we're pressing the menu update and if we would take a look in the viewport or in the renderer, the colors that we painted would be reflected there. Now obviously, if we just paint it with red and want to mix the menu on painting coming from the mesh with the color that we um, got from the texture map, instead of using the normal channel here, we can switch to the original color channel and instead of adding, we can switch the uh, addition arithmetic operator to multiplication, which will paint the red color onto the texture applied to the statue. As you can see, we can uh, have to enable the uh, modifier, of course, and that means we can mix colors coming from the base object with uh, colors defined inside the character uh, channels modifier. And the results will end up in the renderer and would be visible also in the particle data view. Assigning a standard material is a much quicker way if we want to uh, modify only the uh, color of the particles using a standard map without uh, too much control. Let's uh, try to do this just to get an idea. Uh, we can grab a cellular map and change it to uh, some different colors so we know uh, this is not the same map as before and let's also change the size to 15. Uh, rendering this, since the material is being applied after the transformations and after the modifier stack, the colors defined by the KCM will be completely overwritten by the colors defined inside the uh, standard material. We can of course remove uh, this material by adding the non-material and uh, manually updating uh, will reflect the changes and show the content of the modifier stack again. Now let's take a look how we can use a selection channel in order to mix two textures together. We just created a new blue texture. Let's uh, go into the Crypto Channels modifier and uh, create a new text map input. We can get a texture map from uh, the material editor and grab the new uh, blue map that we created uh, a minute ago. We'll take it as an instance and we're going to blend it with the uh, existing map. We use the uh, function blend operator, feed the one map into the first slot, the other map into the other slot and we'll need a control channel to uh, define uh, the blending ratio. We are going to use the channel selection, scroll to the selection and if we do this we get an error message that says that uh, the channel selection is not available in the particle stream. That means that the PRT volume doesn't know anything about the selection and of course uh, since the character channels modifier fails to update the uh, particles cannot be displayed on top of the stack. Let's disable the KCM for a second and add a volume select modifier. The volume select modifier will provide the selection and now we can see that the one, the blue texture is being applied everywhere and then multiplied by the red color coming from the vertex color channel. We'll switch to vertex subobject level and now we see the other texture being displayed depending on whether the selection state of the particles is off or on. Let's move this uh, volumetric gizmo up and we can see how uh, we can define through a box, sphere or cylinder the area in which uh, the particles will use the one or the other texture. 
it's very important to remember never to use the mesh object mode because that could crash 3ds max um, this is a bug in the volume select modify itself and it's not uh, possible to fix at this point we can also use the soft selection in order to do a, a blending between the two texture maps over distance and um, we can render now which will give us a texture in the top portion of uh, the particle cloud a second texture at the bottom with a gradual transition between the two and a vertex color painting multiplied by the uh, blended result of the two according to the uh, flow in the crypto channels modifier if we uh, hit the update button the error message disappears because now there is a valid selection and there is no uh, problem blending the two maps together as you can see the crypto uh, channels modifier and the magma flow editor could be used to define colors and pretty much can be used as a node-based shading editor to define the look of the particles.